Physics 1.5e. Um, scalars and vectors. Please note the entire thing is supplement. So, vectors and scalars. Um, a vector and a scalar are both measurements of quantity. They just mean different things, and you've actually almost seen them. You've seen them before. Vector and scalar. So let's say I told you to take 10 steps. Me telling you to take 10 steps is a scalar quantity. If I tell you to take 10 steps, left, the second I tell you left, it becomes a vector. Just like um, speed and velocity. Speed is scalar and velocity is a vector. So that's vector and scalar. Um, what they like to get you to do, and it's absolutely backwards to learn it, but hey, they like to teach scalars, sorry, not scalars, vectors through um, diagrams. So what I'll do is, and I'm going to need my roller, so what they'll do is they'll give you, um, what is it called, a key or something, and they will say, uh, 10 centimeters, oh, oops, that's one. 10 centimeters equals 5 meters per second. All right? And then they'll show you a line with an arrow. And your line would go like that. And that will put a point on it. Now, and they'll tell you that this is 50 centimeters. So that is a vector, because if it's 50 centimeters and it's 5 meters per second for every tan, so that's 5 times 10 equals, did I do that right? Hold on. I feel like I, yeah. I didn't set up the math right, monkey. Alright, so if it was 50 centimeters, and then it goes like that, boom. If it was 50, and for every 10 centimeters, it's 5 meters per second, you know that that arrow shows, why did I write centimeters? 25 meters per second. Worst example ever. Okay, so now to show you what they really do with it. Um, so they will have a a line and what they really like to use these for is forces alright and I'll say that uh, one centimeter equals one Newton we'll make it simple alright and we'll start from there so we'll make the first one 60 centimeters and we'll make the second one 40 centimeters and then there's an angle all right so this is 60 cm and 40 cm and of course you can write those the other way this is also uh, 60 and 40 newtons because of the the key up there and if those two let's say it was two boats pulling like that and like that the resultant force is actually, you know, somewhat in a straight line that way. And that's what this unit is about. Using actual uh, math skills to do it. And you would have to use something called <sighs> the parallelogram. I can't say that word. Parallelogram. You know, this shape. Yes, you use that. And what you do is you continue. And you would just turn my red lines into a parallelogram. All right, I was going to pause it and do it while you weren't looking because I suck at this with the ruler on the board. But hey, might as well just let you watch. So now you're going to turn this into a parallelogram. And you're going to find the 60 and connect and draw your line. 
feel like this isn't going to work, but hey. And then for the other one, you find the 40, and then you connect. So now you've created this shape that's effectively a parallelogram. Wow, that erases if you go backwards. So you create this parallelogram. All right. Oh, you, you just found that out and you still did it. And your resultant force is going to be when you connect your corners together. All right. So now we connect our corners together. Let's use orange. And then once we've connected our corners together, you can measure the length of it to tell you your resultant force. So we know that if one boat pulls this way, with 60 newtons, and one boat pulls this way with 40 newtons, the boat goes straight this way with 80 newtons, because when we measured it, if I can get this right again, hey no, we measured it, we get 80 newtons. I really do hate this topic, it seems so silly, because there's a math way to do it. Um, you just use your uh, what is it? What do you call Sakatoa? Yeah, that stuff. What is that? Trigonometry? I feel like it's called trigonometry. Yeah. So there's a math way to do it. So if you want to use the math way, go for it. But they're going to get you to draw it. And rewind the video, watch it again. I did not explain that great. I put a simpler scale to make it easier, but that scale can be anything and they can ask you from any direction. They can ask, they can tell you it in words and make you draw it, or they can give it to you as a drawing and make you measure. So, it's a small topic, but it's there. So, demonstrate and understand the difference between scalars and vectors. Scalar is a magnitude, vector is a magnitude and a direction. That's a nice way to say it. Add vectors by graphical representation to determine a resultant. Done. Determine graphically the resultant of two vectors. Done. Okay, so that's vectors and scalars. I should probably say that my that yellow line is called your resultant. Um, similar, or let's go for something simpler. Alright, let's try Oh, I got, just got dizzy. Is that level? Good level, get level. All right, so let's have two lines. One that is 100 centimeters, and one that is 60 centimeters. All right. And then we have a scale what was that? Uh, we have a scale of one centimeter equals, I don't know, 50 newtons. All right. I forgot my numbers. So this was 100 centimeters, and this was 60. 60 centimeters. So then you do the math and you get it, right? Is that, what, 5,000? 5,000 newtons. Is that 300? Yeah, it looks like 300 to me. Oh, 3,000. 3,000 newtons. Alright, so now you have to write a resultant. This one's a lot simpler. You just have to subtract. Your resultant force is going to be. Two thousand this way, and of course, using the same scale, two thousand newtons is the same as boom. That's the extent of how you're going to do vectors and scalars. Peace in the Middle East.